Good afternoon or good evening to everybody here on Saturday. Thank you guys so much for joining in today's live stream. We're going to be talking about a severe weather outbreak and a significant one as we go into Saturday or from into Monday rather, Monday, April 1st into Tuesday, April 2nd. And this is probably looking to be one of the more significant severe weather outbreaks of the season so far. So before we get to the live stream here, if you are new here, make sure to subscribe to the channel down below so you guys get detailed, accurate weather forecasts. We post videos on this channel. We do live stream updates such as this one for severe weather coverage. Also be sure to like the live stream down below. It truly does help out more than you think. And let's look here first at Sunday because tomorrow on Easter Sunday, a lot of people have plans and we do certainly have some severe weather across portions there of the Ohio River Valley into portions of the Midwest. We have a slight risk upgrade for severe weather here across central and southern Illinois getting into central Indiana. This is stretching from Springfield, the capital there of Illinois, eastward to Indianapolis. That is the highest coverage or intensity that we see for severe weather as we go into Sunday. That's a level two out of five. But a larger marginal risk here along a warm front from Omaha down towards Topeka, Kansas City, stretching east toward Des Moines, areas very close there in St. Louis, over here to Cincinnati, Columbus, Charleston, Louisville. That's in a level one out of five. That is a marginal risk of severe weather there on Sunday. So let's go through the hazards of which you could see from these severe storms, from the biggest hazards to the least biggest hazards here. The biggest threat for the severe weather on Sunday will be large hail. And you can see the five to the 15% shading here for large hail, the 15% in yellow, Springfield over to Indianapolis, but the brown shaded color there in that marginal risk for hail could be seeing those hailstones around quarter, maybe half dollar size perhaps as we go into Sunday afternoon and evening, and a small tornado risk across northeastern Missouri, downstate Illinois, again into the Springfield region, Decatur down towards Champaign, Urbana, and then getting over in towards the Indianapolis region. That is a 2% shading there for tornadoes. That is a secondary risk risk. And then the lowest threat will be for damaging winds. The wind threat's not going to be that big of a deal, but if these storms get strong enough, the updrafts get strong enough, we could be talking about 58 mile per hour wind gusts or higher, which would be severe criteria. So let's walk you through the timing here. Generally for Sunday morning, there's the warm front. You can see that arcing band of showers, a couple embedded thunderstorms in here. Notice the coverage Sunday morning is not going to be particularly widespread with any showers or storms, but we could be dealing Dealing with potentially a couple of storms here, perhaps northern Missouri, this model in particular showing a red cell there. That could be, you know, a thunderstorm for Sunday morning. And then as we go into the peak daytime heating, Sunday afternoon, you can see there's a supercell that actually begins to develop there in central and eastern Illinois around the I-74 corridor near Peoria, pushing further to the east here. Those could be the ones that could produce some hail and perhaps a couple tornadoes, maybe some damaging winds as well. We'll keep an eye on that. It's the southernmost cell that we'll have to keep an eye on here. We have a lot of inflow to these storms and we also have the most instability further to the south as well, just south of that warm front where the warm sector lies as we go into Sunday afternoon. Then going into Sunday night, I think it's more of a heavy rain setup overnight because we'll stabilize the atmosphere. So it's mainly an afternoon, early evening event for severe weather as we go into Sunday. There could be a few embedded severe thunderstorms within this rain shield here, but I think for the most part, a lot of this will just be some stratiform rain, maybe even potentially uh, some thunderstorms embedded in here from uh, Ohio into Michigan, Indiana, which would be northern Ohio, northern Indiana, southern lower Michigan, Chicago into Cook County there, and then potentially down toward I-80 in Illinois, Peoria, down there towards Princeton, down there towards uh, Kankakee, Joliet, and then stretching back to Queen. Quincy, Illinois, we could be seeing some showers and storms there as we go into Sunday night. Let's look at the rainfall totals with this going through the rest of Easter weekend. So any Easter plans out there on your Sunday for any egg hunts or anything like that? Well, it could be a wet one as we go through Monday morning. Widespread quarter, half inch, even isolated three quarters of an inch of rain here from portions of the Ohio River Valley. This does also include northern Kentucky down here. So definitely watching Louisville, Lexington perhaps getting in on some heavier rain, Pikeville over here in eastern Kentucky, and then back into the Illinois Valley there 
there. The land of Lincoln could be talking about some heavier rain, especially near that I-80 and I-74 corridor there. And also I-57 in Illinois from Peoria to Chicago could definitely be talking about some heavier rain through Monday morning. Now let's talk about what we're actually here for is a significant severe weather outbreak likely to unfold if not expected to unfold as we go into Monday. The Storm Prediction Center already three days out here from this event. Today's Saturday and definitely seeing some confidence for a significant outbreak. They already have a level three out of five on the scale which is an enhanced risk that stretches from the Missouri Ozarks region down into northwestern portions of Arkansas near the Fort Smith area and then getting into southeastern Kansas back into east central Oklahoma. This does include Tulsa here so definitely watching Tulsa up here toward Joplin looking up here towards Jefferson City and Springfield the Missouri Ozarks region and very close to St. Louis especially on the Missouri side of St. Louis we're definitely seeing here that enhanced risk of severe weather but I would be remiss if I didn't show the slight risk the slight risk here of severe weather weather is across the Dallas-Fort Worth area all the way down into northern, almost central Texas here. So the Dallas-Fort Worth area up there towards Little Rock, getting into St. Louis there into downstate Illinois, and then moving into Indianapolis there, we do have a threat of a two out of five. That's a slight risk on the scale. And then the dark green surrounding that is still a one out of five. Still could be seeing some severe weather there on Monday. Let's look at the risk categories and understand what this actually means. So if you have a slight risk of severe weather, that does mean the Storm Prediction Center does have increased confidence that some of these storms will contain damaging winds, also some severe hail. When we're talking severe hail, we're talking an inch or greater in diameter. That's quarter size hail and then also and or a tornado potential. And a few of those storms could be significant. What they mean by that is that one or two of those storms could produce those 75 plus mile per hour wind gusts, two inch larger diameter hail, or a stronger EF2 or you know stronger variety tornado. And the coverage usually during a slight risk day is isolated to scattered severe weather. Now, once we get to Monday's threat, you can see this is an enhanced risk. So you have a level three out of five, that means high confidence that several storms will contain damaging winds, severe hail, and or tornadoes. Several of those severe storms could be significant here, scattered to numerous severe storm coverage. So definitely watching that on Monday, scattered to numerous severe storm coverage. And honestly, I really do think as we get closer to Monday, they will be bumping this up to probably a moderate risk as we get closer, probably the day of Monday morning. So I'll be definitely watching that. And if that does occur, then that means several storms are likely to be significant and also numerous severe storms still expected, almost a widespread outbreak. So that's kind of what we're looking at here. Probably looking at a level three out of five for sure that day. I think a four out of five, a moderate risk is possible as we do get closer. Let's look a little bit under the lens here and let's show you exactly what we're seeing for the setup of severe weather because it's easy to say that we're going to see severe weather but without understanding the dynamics in the atmosphere you just really don't understand what the atmosphere is capable of. So let's look here at our dew point temperatures on Monday. Very much so, very much so uh, moist air mass here. Dew points will be well into the 60s all the way up into the Ozarks here. We're talking 60 degree dew point in St. Louis, 65 66 degree dew point down here towards Springfield, Missouri near 70. I mean, we're up to 67 degree dew point there on Monday into Tulsa. So there's a lot of fuel here with the moist air and we definitely have that at our, at our disposal. And now let's look at the surface base Cape. This is your convective available potential energy. And this is what is otherwise known as instability. And you can see the reservoir here is pretty strong, pretty deep. You don't need a lot of instability this time of year to produce severe weather because you have a lot of wind shear this time of year. It's the windiest time of year is April. And you can see that there's some instability values, especially down here near Oklahoma City, into Tulsa, Eastern Oklahoma in general, but then up into the Ozarks region near St. Louis. And then right along that warm front, that's where the highest instability is. And that's pushing up around 
around 1,500, close to 2,000 joules per kilogram. That's what we call weak to moderate instability here. And we also look at the kinematics too. So not only do you need energy for storms, you need the lift, you need the organization. So here's looking at the 500 millibar mid-level jet stream. And this is a pretty good ripping trough that's gonna be moving in. And you can see on the base of the trough, the positively tilted trough, that's where we have that mouth of that jet right over that region there in Missouri, the Ozarks, down into Northwest Arkansas, Southeast Kansas, and especially really strong there once we get to early evening hours there in eastern Oklahoma for storm organization, we also look at a low level jet. This is in the 850 millibar layer and you can see very strong over about 50 knots into portions, especially of Missouri down into maybe northern Arkansas. So we have a lot of organization here and a lot of parameters coming together for a significant outbreak as we go into Monday and we'll be fine tuning those ingredients as we get closer with my daily videos. Now let's look at our lightning flash density here. This is basically showing where thunderstorms are likely to be. Not exactly what this looks like. This will change a few times before we get to Monday, but definitely giving you a flavor of what these storms could do and where they could be and how severe they could be. So the brighter the color, essentially the more lightning these storms could have and also the stronger they typically could be. So you can see here across the Illinois Valley, yeah, Land of Lincoln been very active early this season. There you go, Monday morning. Could have some hailers up here. St. Louis, Peoria, Illinois, over towards Champaign-Urbana, maybe Carbondale we'll, into southern Illinois. We have to keep an eye on some of those hailers right along that warm front. And it's, as it's trying to advance further north, we could be talking quarter, half dollar size hail. And I wouldn't be surprised if enough dynamics come together near the warm front to even have a tornado maybe early on into Monday morning. So that could set the flavor for the day. But it's really as we go into the afternoon, there's the cold front. The cold front is going to be intersecting all that warm, moist, and unstable air, That all the energy I was showing you. Once that cold air comes in, it's going to be able to tap into that energy. So that's what the cold front's going to do. And it's going to act as a lifting mechanism to lift those air parcels up into the up into the a cloud you know into the sky and form clouds and we definitely could be seeing some pretty strong storms here lining up from western illinois down through central missouri there into southeastern kansas into the Oklahoma City metro area perhaps, Lawton, and then back here in towards areas west of the DFW Metroplex Monday afternoon. It won't take long and we're gonna see that organization. We showed you the kinematics, the mid-level, low-level jet, very organized windshield with this system, and that's gonna organize these storms into what we call a QLCS, a very, very dynamic system here, and this could be producing widespread wind damage across these areas here into eastern Oklahoma, northern and northwest Arkansas, southern Missouri, and into southern Illinois, even some very strong storms potentially, even up here into Indiana, Ohio. So we need to keep an eye, eye on that warm front. We already unfortunately know what a warm front can do in Ohio and Indiana. We've already had several tornadoes this year, and this warm front is it going to be a key player again. You have the lift with the warm front, you have the moisture, the instability, and the wind shear. So we definitely have to keep an eye on that, but I think the main most intense area of severe weather, more organized, widespread storms will be Southern Illinois, maybe Southwestern Indiana, but Southern Illinois, Southern Missouri into Northwest Arkansas and Eastern portions there of Oklahoma. But even down here into like North Texas, we need to keep an eye on the Dallas Fort Worth area over toward Texarkana as well. Uh, for some stronger storms on the southern flank here. The widespread area of severe weather is going to be further north, but I think we could have some supercells producing some big hail as we go down further to the south Monday evening. And then as we go into early Tuesday morning, shifting that severe weather further east, and we're likely after midnight probably still talking severe weather. Places like Kentucky, so if you live there into Lexington, if you live into Bowling Green, if you live down here, perhaps Jackson, Tennessee, Clarksville, back down towards the Pine Bluff region into Arkansas, uh, Little Rock, jo uh, Jonesboro, Memphis. Yeah, we're going to be keeping an eye on that severe weather threat after midnight, but it does look like the coverage and intensity of the severe weather by this point after midnight Monday into Tuesday will likely be on the decline. So we'll keep an eye on that. Then as we go into Tuesday, here we go. We got another setup here with a slight risk, a little lower of a threat on Tuesday, but still there across portions of the mid Atlantic. We're talking Maryland, 
uh, portions of Delaware here into northern Virginia, western Virginia, into west Virginia, southern portions of Ohio, eastern and central Kentucky, down into middle and eastern Tennessee, western Carolinas, especially western North Carolina there, northern Georgia, northern Mississippi. So another widespread area of a two out of five, that slight risk for severe weather, scattered severe weather. And again, this is a day on Tuesday where it's a few days out. We're about four days out from Tuesday now. So we definitely have to keep an eye on this. This could also be upgraded to a level three out of five which would also be an enhanced risk of severe weather. So we'll keep an eye on this. All modes of severe weather will be in play here. Looking at the dynamics as well to understand, here's more 60 degree dew points. And typically what you need for severe weather is 55 degree dew points or higher. So we have that, check the box off for the moisture. We have the instability, still around 1,000, 2,000 joules per kilogram here, and definitely looking at an even stronger mid-level jet on Tuesday as this system starts to mature and organize as it pushes across the Ohio Valley into the mid-Atlantic, and the low-level jet is there as well. So Tuesday, rightfully so, could be another big day for severe weather back-to-back, -back, Monday and Tuesday. So what a way to start April, that is for sure. And let's look at the timing here, Tuesday morning, we, we likely could go uninterrupted all night with severe weather warnings across portions of the southeast or even portions of the Tennessee River Valley. So we definitely could be waking up to severe storms knocking on our doorstep in Chattanooga or Knoxville or even down here to uh, the um, Tupelo region, Florence, into Alabama there. So definitely keeping an eye on that Tuesday morning. Going into Tuesday afternoon, there we go, peak heating. We have all the organization, showed you all the parameters there. We're going to light the radar up again here from the Dixie Alley region all the way up through the mid-Atlantic here. And if we have any stronger storms in the mid-Atlantic, I think that's the best overlap here. So if you live in eastern Kentucky, West Virginia, into Virginia, or even eastern Tennessee here um, near the Knoxville region, Chattanooga, that's the area I'm most concerned about here on the northeastern flank of this precipitation because you have the most overlap with the dynamics and the strongest dynamics for Tuesday afternoon. And then we'll start to see that again shift east Tuesday evening. Still some severe weather there into the western Carolinas, Asheville there and potentially down toward the Atlanta region. But I think more of this will again be turning to more of a heavy rainfall threat by then. And then early Wednesday morning, again after midnight, we're going to start to see these storms weaken again. And I think we're going to see that cold front move off the southeast coast and we'll say goodbye to our severe weather outbreak. So we're definitely, uh, we're definitely, we're, we're due. We're due for severe weather. We're going to get severe weather here. And it really starts on Sunday. It's the kicker system there on Sunday. The warm front moves north. And then we have the warm front in place as we go into Monday and Tuesday. And the warm sector is wide open for severe weather. So another big day there, Monday, Tuesday. And probably the biggest two days of severe weather so far in 2024. We'll be keeping an eye on that. Anybody who's wanting to know about the moisture out here, a lot of rainfall is on the way. So if you live in the Midwest here, Missouri, Iowa, especially Southeast Iowa there, and then into Illinois, Indiana, stretching through Ohio here into Pennsylvania, into West Virginia. We couldn't, even Northern Kentucky could be seeing widespread rainfall amounts right through the Mid-Atlantic, the Ohio Valley into the Midwest over two or three inches here. So, and this is going to be coming through Wednesday. So it's not really that long and we're gonna see a lot of heavy rain through this region. It's right along that warm front and that could spell out the trouble for some flash flooding here. We do have a marginal to even slight risk for flash flooding. The highest flash flooding risk is with that MCS, that mesoscale convective system or the QLCS we we're talking about, just an organized line of storms Monday into Tuesday, not only producing our most intense severe weather potential, but our most intense area for flash flooding potential. So if you live in the Missouri Ozarks, you're kind of in the crosshairs here in Missouri, Southern Missouri, Central Missouri, into southeastern Kansas, northeastern portions there of Oklahoma for some flash flooding Monday into Tuesday. And then we'll see that shift further east as we go Tuesday and into Wednesday. So if you guys have any questions in the chat about anything I just went over here in today's live stream, make sure to ask your questions about where you are relative to the risk for severe weather. We'll try to help you out with any questions you have. That's what we're here for. Also, again, be sure if you are new here, subscribe to the channel down below. Also, definitely uh, subscribe to my second channel. It's pinned at the top of the chat. If you guys live in the north central U.S., make sure to go sub up to that channel. We do Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and the weekends if needed. We cover the northern and central plains, 
the Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley on that channel with detailed forecasts. I'll still do videos on this channel. This is the main channel. That's the second channel. So make sure to go sub up to that. And again, like this live stream. It helps out. All right, let's see. We got any questions in here? Um, yeah, Misty, you're in a slight risk for flash flooding if you are in Missouri there as we go into your Monday, Tuesday time frame. So if you're in central southern Missouri, then yeah, you're probably going to see that risk for uh, some flash flooding there. Can I go to the th uh, day three radar? Sure, yeah. So are you talking about this area here? So this is not really, this isn't a radar. This is kind of like a simulated radar, if you will. This is kind of showing you what it could look like. If you're talking about day three, this is on Tuesday. And you can see that Tuesday starting off with storms there right around Tennessee and then shifting eastward and kind of growing into a lot of storms there from the mid-Atlantic down into the southeast Dixie Alley region. And then we're going to see that decline in intensity and coverage Tuesday evening and then move off the coast early Wednesday morning. Right, exactly. Outfit boss. Yeah, the tornadoes are still rare, but... With, with an outbreak of severe weather like this, it's, it can produce some tornadoes and it definitely could produce tornadoes that are strong. So that's why we want to warn people before these outbreaks occur so they are best prepared for what is to come, whether it's from hail, from damaging winds, from tornadoes, strong tornadoes, whatever it may be, even flash flooding. So this is going to be a big deal for somebody. So basically an enhanced risk of severe weather is a 30% probability within a 25 mile radius of any given point. So let me go back to the outlook here and kind of under, you know, make you guys understand what I'm talking about here. So across like say if you're in Springfield, Missouri or Joplin or Tulsa or Fort Smith, Arkansas, you're in that enhanced risk zone. That's a level three out of five. That's the highest risk so far that they do have on the outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. So essentially, if you're in that area, within a 25 mile radius of that area, that means you have a 30% chance of seeing significant severe weather. Okay, so that could mean tornadoes, that could mean damaging winds, or some large hail. So that is within a 25 mile radius. Certainly not everybody's gonna see severe weather, but I think widespread severe weather is an issue as we go into Monday. And I think Tuesday is the same way as well. If we you know, stretch it back over here into Tuesday, I think this could get upgraded to an enhanced and another 30% coverage of severe weather across these areas. So that's something to keep an eye on. That's, that's something to keep an eye on. Only Western Maryland in a flooding situation? No, I just showed you that across portions of Missouri, the entire Ohio River Valley could see some flash flooding as we go through next, uh, early next week. I may be streaming on Monday and Tuesday. It just depends here on my schedule, but I will be putting a video out tomorrow updating you folks on this on this channel. I will also be putting out a video as we go into Monday during the day into April. So we're going to be doing that as well. My, If anybody wants to know, severe weather is top priority on this channel. So that means that our April outlook may have to be delayed a couple days into April until this outbreak is over with. So likely April 3rd is when my April monthly outlook will be out. So if you guys are wondering about that. Tyler, Texas on Monday. Um, let me go look here. Tyler, Texas on Monday. It looks like Tyler, Texas would uh, would see severe weather potentially as we go into Monday evening. So it's a later day event there. So across eastern Texas. So we're talking more like Dallas, Fort Worth and like I-35 on east there. We're probably talking more mid to late evening. So we'll have to keep an eye on that for Tyler. What, what what about the rest of Maryland? I, I don't know exactly what you, I don't know what you're asking about Maryland. So you'll have to be more specific. Uh, Branson, Missouri. Yes, Branson, Missouri there in southern Missouri. You are in the crosshairs of the most intense widespread severe weather on Monday as of right now. And actually, I think it's going to occur. So um, I think you could be upgraded to a moderate risk in Branson, Missouri as we get closer. 
Here's the timing for this. So like Monday morning, it's pretty dry here. And then as we go into Monday afternoon, there's some storms right off the cold front, warm front to your north and west. And then those storms really start to intensify and mature for Branson, Missouri, Monday evening. So I think the time frame for Branson is 6 p.m. Monday to 11 p.m. Monday, okay? So you're talking mainly an evening event for you there into southern Missouri in the Branson region. And again, for Branson too, all modes of severe weather will be in play, damaging winds, large hail, and tornadoes. So, Bowling Green, Missouri. I'm not exactly sure where that's at. Here, let me look. Bowling Green. Just a moment here. Um, okay, you're... Yes, Bowling Green is in the crosshairs for severe weather. So mainly after late afternoon, early evening for Bowling Green. So your timing's a little earlier. You're talking about three o'clock in the afternoon till about seven o'clock. So you're looking at three to seven there in the Bowling Green area for severe weather. You can see a broken line to your north and west Monday afternoon and then transitioning into more mature storms. I think the strongest of the storms there will be just to your south there of the Bowling Green, Missouri area, but you're gonna be very close. So severe weather is still likely for you. Yeah, you're welcome, BB. What about Cincinnati? Yes, yeah, Cincinnati, same thing. It looks like Mon it's going to be an evening event mainly for you. You could have some storms in the afternoon on Monday there in Cincinnati, but I think it's mainly Monday evening. you got to watch that warm front set up, and then it's Monday after midnight. So we're talking into Tuesday morning. So very late event there for Cincinnati. Timing for you is literally anywhere from mid-afternoon, like 3 p.m., through about, I would say, 3 a.m. So you got like a 12-hour span of severe weather potential, a lot longer there in Cincinnati as you're near the warm front early in the day in the afternoon, but then the cold front rushes in from the west later in the night. So, Yes, I do think, yeah. I just said that earlier in the live stream. I think a moderate risk uh, will be upgraded potentially uh, as we go into Monday. So Monday during the day is when a moderate risk is probably, I would say there's a probably about a 60% chance in my opinion that they're going to upgrade this to a moderate risk. I think it's pretty likely they're going to go to a level four moderate risk, but that probably won't happen until Monday morning. I'd be surprised if they did it for tomorrow. They can do it on their day two outlook, but I don't think they go there quite yet. Maybe, but I think Monday morning goes to a moderate potentially. Tennessee is not. Tennessee is not in an enhanced risk. So let me go back here. Um, so here's Monday. Tennessee is actually really not in a severe weather risk on Monday. So you're, you, the very far western or northwestern portions there of Tennessee you're like literally like north along and north of Memphis there and west of Jackson, Tennessee. You're under a level one out of five, a marginal risk, really like nothing to worry about. And then as you go into like Tuesday, if you go down to Tuesday here, then you're talking more of like middle and eastern Tennessee, the Cumberland Plateau area. So like Nashville, Cookville, Crossville over to Knoxville there, Chattanooga, um, and then over there toward Johnson City. Is it moving east? Yeah, I would argue that. I think the Mississippi Valley could probably, like the Mississippi Valley from Louisiana, Mississippi, Arkansas, all the way up to Wisconsin um, would, you know, I guess be the new Tornado Alley area, you could say. What about zip code 39705? All right, let me look here real quick for you. You're talking northeast uh, Mississippi. Um, it looks like you're kind of in between like the severe weather events. So I, I really don't see Northeastern Mississippi. Let me, let me see here. So Monday, you're not going to be affected at all. I think Mississippi could have some strong storms as we go into Tuesday and especially Tuesday afternoon. We'll have to watch Northeastern Mississippi, but even that I think is more of a damaging wind and hail threat. So, uh, I'm not too concerned about Mississippi with this setup particularly. Yeah, if you're talking, uh, Patricia, if you're talking north of St. Louis, your threat there is going to be mainly as we go into, 
uh, Monday afternoon. So you're looking at Monday afternoon, anytime in the afternoon there, and then starting to move to your south by Monday evening. So mainly an afternoon, very early evening event for you. So I'd say anywhere, anytime between noon and about 6 p.m. is your time frame there north of St. Louis. Thank you very much, fan man. What about Columbus, Ohio? So Columbus, Ohio, again, just like Cincinnati, you're going to have a long duration for potentially strong storms. Maybe Monday morning could have some storms nearby. They could produce some hail. Monday afternoon, some hailers here as well. And then I think this actually turns into more of an intense severe weather event for the mid-south, mid-Mississippi Valley. But I think along the warm front, we need to watch Columbus there. Monday evening could be a spin-up tornado more hail, more damaging wind. So we'll watch you there. But Monday evening appears to be your greatest potential for severe weather there in Columbus. I don't know what you're saying, Roy. I have no clue what that means. Okay, so Amanda Kessler, 65265. All right, let's see what we got here. Uh... Okay, so you're like in northeast, eastern, I guess we'll call it eastern Missouri. So, yeah, so Monday morning could be a storm near St. Louis potentially, kind of, you know, just a storm or two. So we're not really looking at anything too significant there for you, Amanda. And I think as we go into the afternoon, storms fire to your north and west, and then they move through during the mid and late afternoon. So we're talking in your area potentially, we're looking at between noon and 6 p.m. So between noon and 6 p.m. is your highest chance for severe weather there in your area there, Amanda. Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. I don't think Pittsburgh's going to really see anything too significant for severe weather. So as you go into Monday, Pittsburgh is actually just outside of the, like they're maybe, I guess, just very close to that marginal risk. It's a lot of a one out of five, not that big of a deal. And then as we go into Tuesday, you're basically, again, right on that line. So probably a marginal to maybe slight risk there. We'll have to keep fine tuning this, but I think Tuesday's your biggest threat for severe weather there in Pittsburgh relative to uh, the two days there. So Easter hunt indoor or outdoor? Um, I would for, are you talking about Monday or are you talking about Sunday? Because if you're talking Easter, like actually Easter, um, let me go back to the Sunday outlook for tomorrow. So here's the outlook for Sunday. If you're talking Easter for your area, you're under a marginal to slight risk of severe weather. Like you're in a marginal risk there for Eastern Missouri, Amanda, on Sunday. This could include the threat for severe hail, quarter size to half dollar size, maybe a tornado threat, maybe near and just north of you, and then some very low probabilities of some 58 plus mile per hour wind gusts there for you. Looking at timing for Sunday, a warm front moving near your area could have a shower in the morning, moving north in the afternoon. And I think it's really, I think you could do potentially an outdoor hunt. You just got to watch the radar there. Could have some back building of some storms through central Illinois, back towards Hannibal and uh, Quincy, down into portions of Peoria, Illinois, and towards Kirksville, Missouri area. So I think you kind of got to watch that for an Easter egg hunt. It's, it's nothing I can really predict right now, but I think honestly, just watch the afternoon. Um, you definitely could have a storm or two, but I think there's going to be a lot more dry hours than wet hours there for you. For tomorrow, yeah, you're probably talking about an afternoon thunderstorm. Otherwise, it's going to be dry. So it's it's literally a 50%, like 50-50 toss-up for your area. So there's no way I can predict that, unfortunately, for you. But I do think there's, there is a potential that you see a strong thunderstorm. And there's honestly a potential that you see just cloudy skies through the day and see not a drop of rain. So... Uh, very hard for me to predict that, but I think just watch the radar and uh, I'm leaning more towards um, an egg hunt outdoors, but you know, I'm not, I'm not the Easter bunny. So which day for Fort Wayne, Indiana is the severe threat, the best Monday or Tuesday, uh, actually Monday, because Tuesday, the severe we weather threat actually moves to your East. And actually you do have a severe weather threat. Well, you said Fort Wayne just South of you on Sunday. And then in your area on Monday. So, 
Um, Fort, Fort Wayne is actually really just north of the warm front as we go into northern Indiana there as we go into Monday, April 1st. So like Gary, South Bend, Fort Wayne, you're actually only in a general thunderstorm risk there on Monday. Could I see the marginal extending north if the warm front goes further north? Yes, but I don't think you go past a marginal risk. So and, and Monday would be your highest chance for severe weather if you're in that risk. But right now, actually, Fort Wayne, you're not even in a severe risk um, so tomorrow, Monday, or Tuesday. So, I would not do an. Okay, okay. So for most of Missouri, I could, I could see you doing an Easter egg hunt outdoors um, on Sunday. Monday, do not do it. Don't don't do an Easter egg hunt outdoors on Monday. Actually, Monday is a day to watch for significant severe weather. I can't stress this enough that strong tornadoes, strong, big, strong tornadoes, potentially we could be talking about damaging winds and large hail here across Missouri. We need to be weather aware on, uh, in Missouri, the Ozarks region, and uh, again, down towards Southwest Missouri there. So uh, Monday is not looking like a favorable day for any Easter egg hunts outdoors. So Forty-eight one eleven. Yes, we got you, Rebecca. Here, just real quick. Forty-eight one eleven. All right, uh, you're looking at. Okay, yeah, you're just outside Detroit. No, I can say with very much confidence, one hundred percent confidence, you're not going to see any severe weather this entire event, this entire storm system there in your area. Could you see thunderstorms? Yes. Will they be severe? No. You're going to see probably some heavy rainfall here. Let me bring up the rainfall map for you real quick. You can see right here across southern portions of lower Michigan, you could see around an inch to an inch and a half of rain for your area. So a decent soaking rain through midweek, but severe weather is not expected in the Ann Arbor area. I'm in Bowling Green, Kentucky. What does it look like for me on Monday and Tuesday, Carrie says. Well, very heavy rain for one going through the week. It looks like for Bowling Green, you could be talking about between half an inch and around maybe up to two inches of rain through Wednesday for rain. Uh, severe weather in Bowling Green is greatest as we go, I believe, there into Monday. So we're looking at potentially a marginal risk for severe weather on Monday there for Bowling Green. Um, this could include all modes of severe weather, tornadoes, damaging winds, and hail. And then as we go into Tuesday, that kind of shifts eastward. Maybe near the Bowling Green area could still see some severe weather. You're kind of in that late evening and overnight period for severe storms. So we're talking Monday evening, Monday night, into early Tuesday morning before sunrise for severe weather for you, Carrie, potentially. You're welcome, Rebecca. Charleston, West Virginia, your greatest severe weather threat is right here on Tuesday. So you have a slight risk and you're in the area there in Charleston where I think you could be in the crosshairs for potentially an upgrade to an enhanced risk of severe weather once we get closer to Tuesday. So that is something to watch. Yes, Charleston, West Virginia is very much in the middle of this risk on Tuesday and potentially could get upgraded to a level three out of five in enhanced risk. And that would include all modes too, tornadoes, damaging winds and hail for Charleston, West Virginia. This will mainly be an afternoon event for you into Charleston. So we're looking at, here's the timing, Tuesday morning, storms to your west, and then really blossoming. Charleston, West Virginia could be talking afternoon. We're talking 2, 3, 4 o'clock, and then the storms move east after dinner. So happy Easter to you. And again, happy Easter to everybody out there. Unfortunately, we're talking about significant severe weather. Um, but you know, it, it is, it is severe weather season and it's going to be an active season. So you're going to see my face a lot on here for severe weather coverage here and there. So just make sure, uh, to stay subscribed to this channel, to hit the notification bell, to like these live streams. It really helps out to get more of this information passed along to more and more people. I cannot stress that enough. It's really helpful. So I appreciate it. All right. So I will have a video out for you folks tomorrow morning. So. You're welcome, Mike. You're welcome, Arnie, as well. Um, what about Tuesday in Middle Tennessee? So let's go back. All right. So Middle Tennessee on Tuesday, you're under a slight risk, a level two out of five there. So a slight risk means scattered severe thunderstorms will be possible 
for Nashville, Cookville, Crossville, into Knoxville, and then over there to Johnson City, and into the uh, Chattanooga region, uh, Murfrees, uh, I think it's Murfreesboro, um, that area could be talking about some severe weather there in Middle Tennessee on Tuesday. And again, it's the same thing, morning into the afternoon event. It's kind of an earlier event on Tuesday, later event on Monday. Do you expect an active thunderstorm pattern in April in the Midwest? In the Midwest, yes. I think it's going to be kind of further to the south for a while. So we're kind of focusing more on like, if we're talking the Midwest, like central Illinois, northern Missouri on south. If you're talking the upper Midwest for April, there could be some severe weather. But I think for like Minnesota, Wisconsin, like Michigan, like the UP up here in Michigan, Iowa, Nebraska, these areas, like the, the Dakotas too, I think we're talking more May into June. So you will have, we'll have to wait a little bit longer. But you never know. You could get those surprise events even into April. All right. And again, if you folks are just joining and you want a lot more additional weather uh, information and coverage, make sure to go subscribe to the second channel up there pinned at the top of the chat, North Central Weather Center. We do forecast videos Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and the weekends if needed. And that covers the northern and central plains all the way down as far south as Kansas. This covers the Midwest, the upper Midwest, the lower Midwest, the Great Lakes, and the Ohio Valley. We cover all the way over into Michigan, Indiana, and Ohio, and Kentucky on that channel. So make sure to go sub up to that channel if you haven't already. Of course, we'll always have the main channel here for videos, but you guys can go sub up to that channel. We'll have more updates coming up too with that, actually with the video on Monday. So it kind of works out perfectly. Yes, Monday I think is going to go moderate. Yeah, I think Monday is going to go moderate. You're welcome, Arnie. So, like Indiana and Illinois thing. You're welcome, Max. Yeah, you're talking about Illinois and Indiana. I think April there could be some events, but I think you're going to wait longer like for the actually bigger events more focused, more frequent in Illinois and Indiana. I think you're waiting till May or June. So it's going to get active after a while for sure. So does anybody have any other questions for me regarding what's happening here over the next few days? Um, I can take your questions. Otherwise, don't hesitate to put your questions down in the chat after the video is or the live stream is over. I will be able to answer as many questions as I can after the live stream is over. I'll, of course, have a video forecast for you tomorrow morning. Be looking out for that. Make sure to like those videos. Definitely really help out to get more of the information passed along uh, to more and more people. So, And again, subscribe to this channel. Otherwise, you won't see my face again. That's just how it works here on the YouTube algorithm. So I appreciate it. All right. No worries, Max. Thank you, Autumn. I appreciate it. Happy Easter to you. You're leaving Alabama tonight to travel to Palm Springs, California, I believe, and so I was. You could have some rain along the way and some snow potentially if you're driving, but I don't think um, I don't think you should have too many big problems. Maybe some delays, but I don't think anything too significant um for you if you're leaving tonight you should be fine but you could run into some precipitation across the desert southwest area like the four corners region other than that you should be fine will northeast ohio see severe weather on tuesday gusty winds from storms northeast ohio is right now here's the tuesday outlook you can see that on the screen that the slight risk of severe weather is in southern ohio northeastern ohio is currently removed from that could I see a marginal risk potentially, but I think the greatest severe weather potential is actually across Southern Ohio and really down actually into Eastern Kentucky, West Virginia, Virginia, and into Maryland there. That's where the main severe weather corridor will set up as we go into Tuesday. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you so much for saying that. I hope you have a happy Easter as well. Uh, 
Um, let's see. But anybody else got any more questions? I'm I'm here for just a couple more minutes to answer. Um, otherwise, again, yeah, I you know I've said it a few times. You might have just joined too, so my bad. But yeah, moderate risk probably on Monday. Right now, officially just an enhanced risk. So let me go back to the Monday outlook here. The Monday outlook looks like this right now. There's an enhanced risk across Missouri, central and eastern Missouri, down through southwest Missouri, southeastern Kansas, east central Oklahoma, and northwestern portions there of Arkansas. We're looking at the uh, Ardmore region up to Oklahoma City, Tulsa, into Fort Smith, Arkansas, into southeastern Kansas, those smaller communities there, into Joplin, up there to Jefferson City and Springfield, and very close to St. Louis. We could have that upgraded to an enhanced in St. Louis, wouldn't be surprised. And again, I, I, I very well could see a four out of five and moderate risk being issued either tomorrow for tomorrow's outlook, but more likely on Monday morning's outlook from the Storm Prediction Center. I really do think this is probably going to go moderate at some point. All right. Good. It's always ready to. It's always good to be ready for severe weather. There you go, Misty. It's always good to be prepared. That is definitely some good news. So, it's better to be prepared um, than not. So that's for sure. Well, last April Fool's outbreak was a lot worse. We actually had two areas with a high risk. I don't see this event. This event is not going to go high risk. It's not going to go high risk. At the worst case scenario, it could be a moderate risk. At the best case scenario, the way it looks is going to be an enhanced risk. So best case scenario stays an enhanced risk. Worst case scenario I see is a moderate risk for severe weather. I do not see a high risk of severe weather being issued for this particular storm. The, the trough in which this storm is developing on is not ejecting like a trough that would look like you would see for like a high risk. This is a positively tilted trough. While it's still pretty potent, I don't really, th it's not a big bowling ball trough, not one of those real classic looking troughs. If this was a little bit more well-rounded and maybe even a negatively tilted trough, then I could say, okay, well, this may be upgraded to a high risk. But with what the dynamics look like, with this trough being positively tilted, I don't think there's even a chance this even goes a high risk. So if anybody's wondering out there. Happy Easter to you, me, mister. All right, well, thank you guys so much for joining. Hope everybody has a great rest of their Saturday and weekend out there. Have a happy Easter. Remember, I'll have a video out for you folks tomorrow morning, weather forecast video on weather on the go. And on Monday, we'll have two videos out, one on this channel, weather on the go, and sub up to my second channel. If you live in the north central U.S., I'll have a video on that channel as it's Monday. So the schedule on that channel is Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays, weekends if needed. And that video will be out for both channels there on Monday. So make sure you go subscribe to this channel and subscribe to the second channel. If you're wondering where that is, it's pinned at the top of this chat. And you guys can go subscribe over there to that one as well. Thank you guys so much for being here. I do appreciate it. We'll have more updates around the clock. If you guys are curious, I will have, again, a video tomorrow, possibly a video in the afternoon, depending on what happens, because there will be, it's day two outlook, so they'll be upgrading, or updating anyway, the outlook for uh, for Monday twice tomorrow. So once at one o'clock in the morning, and then a second time at 12.30 in the afternoon. So I may have an afternoon video update as well. So make sure that you are, again, subscribe to the channel, turn on all notifications, including for videos and live streams, and I will definitely see you folks tomorrow. So thank you guys so much for being here. Here's tomorrow's severe weather risk on Easter Sunday. I wanna leave you with this. Make sure to stay safe out there. The tornado threat for your Sunday is a 2%. Northeastern Missouri, southern and central Illinois, and southwestern portions of Indiana. Thank you guys again, and see you all tomorrow. Stay safe, everyone.